Hey, what's up, brothers and sisters? It's me, Verse of the Day. I hope you've been well, and I hope you've been blessed. In today's video, we're going to start a two-part series, which is called, What Did Christ Go to Prepare? And in this uh, specific series, we're going to hinge on Luke chapter 14 and Matthew chapter 25. So in video number one, we're going to look at Luke chapter 14. So let's look at verses 2 and 3 of Luke 14. It says, In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. So the popular belief in the 21st century for Christians is that Christ went to go to prepare a room for us in heaven, so that when he comes back to gather the church in the rapture, he will have a place to put us. The church today likes to call this the wedding supper of the Lamb, and that the Father is going to send the Son to rapture the church before things get bad. However, there are so many glaring problems with this theology, I actually had to quit going to some churches because it was leading so many people astray. First, it needs to be said that Christ only returns one more time. This can be found in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 28. He doesn't appear in the clouds to take his favorite Christians to heaven for the wedding, while the rest of his church, often dubbed the Tribulation Saints, are left to suffer and die at the hand of the Antichrist. In fact, the entire end times church, which are included as the wife of Christ, will face the Antichrist. Paul tells us in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 that the coming of our Lord and our gathering together to him will not occur until the man of lawlessness is revealed first, the son of destruction, who exalts himself above God. Secondly, the wedding supper of the Lamb does not happen until the end of the tribulation period. In Revelation chapter 19, it says, starting in verse 7, Let us be glad and rejoice, and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come and his wife hath made herself ready. So in verse 7, the wife has made herself ready. The wife of the lamb is the church. Therefore, the wife does not make herself ready until Christ is about to return in the clouds. Again, we read this in verse 9 when it says, And he saith unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. Again, this proves that the marriage supper of the Lamb has not taken place yet, because there are still blessed people who are invited. Third, Christ comes at the last trumpet. The church cannot be raptured out of here before the trumpets even start sounding off. In Matthew chapter 24, verses 29 through 31, Jesus says, Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then will appear in heaven the sign of the Son of Man. Then all of the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send out his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds from one end of the heavens to the other. To prove that it's the last trumpet, we need to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52. It says, In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. To prove this point even further, we can look in Revelation chapter 11. Starting in verse 15, it says, then the seventh angel blew his trumpet, and there were loud voices in heaven, saying, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Then in verse 18 it says, The nations raged, but your wrath came, and the time for the dead to be judged, and for rewarding your servants, the prophets and saints, and those who fear your name both small and great and for destroying the destroyers of the earth. I want to look very quickly at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52 again. It says, For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, 
and we shall be changed. So the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised first. There are only two more resurrections according to the Bible. There is the resurrection of the saints when Jesus Christ comes back to earth and then there is the millennial kingdom. And after the millennial kingdom, there is another resurrection that happens. Those are the only two resurrections that occur from this point forward. So when people say that the rapture is the catching up of the church and the resurrection of the dead, they are putting in a third resurrection that does not exist according to the Bible. That is why I am adamant about saying that when Jesus comes, he will resurrect the dead. He says that if you believe in me, I will raise you up at the last day. The last day is the day of the Lord when he returns. So as we can tell, Christ did not go to prepare a wedding location for us. At least not one that we go to before all is said and done. I believe the wedding chamber that he prepared is the new Jerusalem that will come out of heaven after the millennium. It even says this in the description. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. Revelation 21, 1-3 The point of this video is to once again tell believers that Jesus Christ is not coming to gather the church out of the earth. Listen to the words of Jesus. He says, I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. John 17, 15 through 16. Our prayer is not for Jesus to snatch us out of the world, but our prayer is for the sign of the Son of Man to appear, so that he can send his angels to catch us up in the clouds, so that we can uh, meet him in the clouds and then return with him in glory. This is what Matthew 24, 1 Thessalonians 4, and Colossians 3 teach us. We've already gone over Matthew 24, 29 through 31. So 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 14 says, For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. Then in Colossians chapter 3, verse 4, it says, When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. When Christ comes, he is going to take us to himself by sending the angels out to gather the saints. Then the heavenly bodies will be burnt up and the works of the earth will be exposed. We then return to the charred earth with him where he will make all things new. During this time, the beast and the false prophet are tossed into the lake of fire and Satan is locked in a bottomless pit for 1,000 years. After this, the Satan will be released from his prison for a short time to deceive the wicked offspring of those who populated the kingdom of Christ. They will march up against the holy city, and when they get close, fire will rain out of heaven and consume the enemies. Then, heaven and earth will flee, and no longer will there be a place found for them. The great white throne judgment will commence, and everyone's name not found in the Lamb's book of life will be cast into the lake of fire where the beast and the false prophet are. Once this judgment is finished, then a new heaven and a new earth will appear, and out of the new heaven, a holy city, the new Jerusalem, will come out of the sky and settle on the new earth. And here we will live forever with our God in peace and harmony for eternity. The New Jerusalem is what I believe Jesus Christ is going to prepare for us right now.